Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into some of the most common React mistake that even experienced developer can make. But don't worry, we are not just pointing out problems, I'll show you how to fix them step by step. Let's level up your React skill together. Here is our first problem, using use effect for synchronous logic. Using use effect for synchronous logic is a common mistake that adds unnecessary complexity to your component. This can make your code harder to understand and maintain, especially for beginners. In this example, we initialize the data state with null and then use the use effect hook to set it to hello world. This logic is straightforward and does not involve any side effect making the use of use effect unnecessary and overcomplicated. Using use effect here does not add any value, instead it makes the code more complex by introducing a lifecycle hook that is not needed. This can confuse other developers or even you future self, leading them to think there are side effect or asynchronous operation happening when there is not. So how we can make this code correct? Here instead of using use effect, what we can do, we can simply write this hello world when we are initializing the state. By directly initializing the data with hello world in the use state hook, we simplify the component significantly. This approach avoids the extra complexity of using use effect and makes the code cleaner and easier to understand. So what we can do, we can remove the use effect from here. We set data directly to the hello world when we call use state. This means data has the correct value right from the start. And there is no need for any additional logic to set it. Since the assignment is straightforward and synchronous, use effect is redundant here. Removing it makes the code simpler and avoids misleading other developers about the unnecessary of side effect. Number 2. Not cleaning up effects. Forgetting to clean up side effects like timer, subscriptions, or event listener in use effect can lead to memory leaks and unexpected behavior. This means that even after a component is unmounted, the side effect might continue running, consuming resources and potentially causing bugs. In this example, a timer is a setup using set interval, which locks a message every second. However, there is a no cleanup function provided. This means that even if the component unmounts, the timer will keep running in background, consuming memory and possibly causing issue in your applications. So let's understand why this is the problem. The timer continues to run even after the component is removed from the DOM. This can cause your application to use more memory over the time and degrade performance. If the component is unmounted and remounted frequently, you might end up with multiple timers running simultaneously leading to confusing and unexpected behavior. So what's the solution? The solution is clean up the function to clear the timer. So let's clean up the function. Here in the use effect to clean up the function we need to return a function callback function and we can write the clear interval with the timer variable. Sorry that should be clear interval. Interval. Cool. So we have cleanup function to clear the timer. Now in the corrected code, we add a cleanup function inside the use effect hook. This function returned from use effects will be executed when the component unmounts or before the effect runs again. By calling clear interval with timer, we ensure that the timer is properly cleared, preventing any potential memory leaks. By properly cleaning up side effects, you keep your component efficient and free of memory leaks. This practice helps maintain the performance and reliability of your React applications. Number three, setting a state with current state in use effect. Using the current state value inside use effect without a proper update function can lead a stale closures. This means the state value used inside the effect may become outdated, causing unexpected behavior. Here in this example, set timeout is used inside use effect to increment the count state after one second. However, the set count line referenced the count state value at the time use effect was first run. This can lead to issue if the state has been updated since the effect was set up. Now let's understand why this is the problem. The count value inside the set timeout callback is stale because it captures the state at the time the effect was created. 
If count changes before the timeout completes, the state update will not reflect the latest value. This can result in a state update that don't match the expected logic leading to bugs and confusions. So how we can make this code correct? We can use function to update the state. Here what we can do, we can use prep count, it's a function and prep count plus one. In this code, we use an updater function inside set count, which is this. This function takes the previous state value, which is prep count, and returns the new state value, which is prep count plus one. This ensures that the state update always uses the latest state value, avoiding the still closer issue. So, what is the advantage of using the updater function? The updater function always receives the latest state value, ensuring the state updates correctly. By using the latest state, we avoid pitfalls of stale closures leading to more predictable and reliable state management. By using an updater function for state changes within effect, you ensure that your component handles state correctly even in asynchronous scenarios. This practice helps maintain your accuracy and reliability of your React application state. Number 4. Overusing state for derived values. Storing derived values in the state instead of computing them on the fly can cause unnecessary renders and add extra state management overhead. Derived values are those that can be calculated from existing state or props, so there is no need to store them separately in state. Here in this example, the item count state is used to store the length of the item array. An effect is set up to update item count whenever items changes. However, this introduces unnecessary state and effect logic for value that can be directly derived from items. Now let's understand why this is a problem. Item count is a derived value that can be calculated directly from items.length. Storing it in a state introduces redundant state management. The component will re-render whenever set item count is called, even though the derived value could be calculated without affecting the component state. Managing derived values in state adds unnecessary complexity to your code, making it harder to read and maintain. So how can we correct this code? So what we can do, instead of using the use state and use effect, we can compute derived value on the fly. Let's see how we can do that. We can simply write items count is equal to items dot length. Instead of using the use state and use effect, we can simply compute derived value on the fly. So we can use this variable in the JSX. In the corrected code, item count is directly computed from items.length within the this eliminates the need for additional state and effect logic. Now the component logic is simpler and more straightforward, making it easier to understand and maintain. Now the component only re-renders when items changes without any redundant state updates. By computing derived values on the fly, you keep your React component efficient and simple. This practice helps maintain clean and performant code base. Number 5, last not the least, directly modifying a state without using the setter function provided by use state can cause state inconsistencies and bugs. React state management relies on the setter function to trigger re-renders and keep the state consistent across the component lifecycle. In this example, the count state is directly incremented using count plus is equal to 1. Here in the line number 9. However, this direct modification does not notify React the state changes, so the component will not re-render and the displays the count will not update. Now let's understand why this is a problem. Directly modifying the state variable does not update the state managed by React, leading to inconsistencies between the actual state and the render's output. React relies on the setter function to know when the state has changed. Without using the setter function, the component will not re-render and the UI will not reflect the updated state. This can lead to bugs where the UI does not match the underlying state confusing users. So making this code correct, instead of using the direct count variable, we can use the setter function. Let's remove the count variable from here and we can use the set count. We can get the previous count. 
and prep count plus one. In the corrected code, the increment function uses the set count setter function to update the state. By passing a function to set count, we ensure the state is updated based on the previous state, which is the recommended way to update a state that depends on its previous value. By always using the setter function provided by useState, you ensure that state updates are handled correctly, leading to reliable and consistent React components. This practice helps mention the integrity and performance of your applications. So that's it for today. If you feel this video is helpful for developers, please like, comment and share this video with developers. And consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.